Student Debris Waste uh, Construction and Debris Waste continues to be one of the most difficult waste streams as uh, discussed by uh, Madam Kiran already. Um, so there are now solutions to this waste stream as well and the best person to speak about this uh, would be Almendra Madam. Um, something is about herself. Uh, we're all aware that she fought a successful battle against uh, poor solid waste management and uh, filed a public interest uh, litigation to force the union government to put in place uh, effective solid waste management policies. Uh, she's a member of the solid uh, Su Supreme Court Committee. No. She was awarded Environmentalist of the Year for Karnataka by Economic Times 1994. A great so I would like to uh, get her on straight away into her presentation. We are talking of construction and demolition waste. Just as wet and dry waste becomes useful if it's unmixed and useless if it is mixed, it's the same with all CL waste. Next. Uh, uh, mixed waste can only be used to uh, fill up and reclaim quarry pits for other land use. Next. <coughs> if the different wastes are unmixed, all of them are useful. Uh, all Safras are welcome. Please welcome him. Whenever any construction is being planned, the first uh, one foot of topsoil should be carefully kept aside for landscaping saves a huge amount of money. The next layers can perhaps go for brick making or it can be used for road shoulders and other places. Uh, the concrete blocks, the plaster waste, ready mix concrete waste, uh, all of this is the most useful fraction. It produces manufactured sand or M sand which hugely saves the environment, and also small aggregate if required. Um, we have a, a recycler. Where is Rajesh? Come. Uh, there is a company with a nice name, Rock Crystals. Rajesh Kora has been on his own. Recycling uh, concrete uh, and plaster, and uh, you can contact him during the uh, discussion thing, although his name is not. This, uh, the uh, bricks, which are not so much used nowadays in construction, but if they are during demolition, it can all go for <coughs> terrace surki or for durable garden pathways and walkways. The ceramic waste can also go in the road subgrade or to concrete block making. Yeah. Uh, there is a whole lot of other miscellaneous waste, like cement sacks, nails, shuttering. All that can go to Kabadi uh, We uh, have uh, <coughs> coming up. Uh, the municipal solid waste rules 2016 are expected to be out by the end of May. It has a whole chapter too which is exclusively on construction and demolition waste. Uh, the BBMP website uh, has a draft notification from 2014. They have been waiting to implement it till the uh, MSW rules 16 are out, and then they will do it. But the two are pretty much already in sync. And what they require, both of them, is also uh, a waste management plan. Every one of you must decide before you construct your building what you're going to do with the waste that's going to come out, 
Here mark a part of it which later may become a parking lot or eatery <coughs> or anything like that, where you will take all your waste and have one heap of soil, one heap of blocks, one heap of bricks, one heap of other things, so that uh, the waste, unmixed, each can become a useful byproduct. This waste management plan is going to become uh, a precondition for getting permission to construct. What we do not have, either in the MSW rules or in the BBMP notification, is uh, we need pre-permission for demolition because the construction waste is fully covered by both the bills. But if we do not uh, uh, have some permission and oversight and planning of demolition, that waste can end up on the roads. Uh, Kiran spoke about uh, seeing piles of debris all along the roadside. <coughs> that is just the tip of the iceberg. Apparently, we have three, 400 tons a day of construction and demolition uh, waste, a uh, thousand rather, three, 400 uh, trucks a day of this. Uh, the tragedy is that most of this is going into low-lying areas, and therefore, it is not seen as a visible problem like wet waste or garbage. But it's a problem which will come home to roost when Bangalore gets floods like Chennai, and the whole uh, city becomes a level tabletop, and there's nowhere for the water to go. <coughs> we are a city of hills and valleys, and we're filling up all the valleys. In the West, they have a policy, a construction policy. If there's a 10-acre site, they calculate how many acre feet of water will fall on that site in a year, or say during a peak rainfall time. <coughs> and they are required to have either a detention basin, which is a low-lying area, can be a parking lot, a football ground, anything like that, um, where the water can come, stay for a day or two, get absorbed and go without damage. Drain off slowly. Uh, the other thing is uh, not a deten uh, retention, uh, not a detention basin, which is the dry one, but a retention basin, which is a landscape pond with a low level of water, uh, in, uh, which can accommodate creek flows when it fills up and has a narrow opening so that the water goes out slowly to the downstream area and doesn't overnight flood a slum or something like that. So, uh, I'll just go back. Uh, so, I think this is something which needs to be addressed in our planning. <coughs> now, each of us can make on site zero waste management a planning precondition. I wonder if any of you have seen the LMT campus, which is on the left side, just before the entrance to GKVK. You'll see some big contoured green uh, hiller. <coughs> it's uh, a landscape feature, but actually <coughs> waste from that whole site, managed on site, covered, and landscaped. Once you give it a smooth shape and a green cover, it becomes an attractive feature. So, all of us need to keep our waste separate and whatever we can use on site. And most of you large, <coughs> most of you large campuses will be engaging uh, uh, MNC project management uh, firms, uh, Smith Klein, Jones Klein, LaSalle, those kind of firms. All of them do this waste management planning, segregation of C and D waste. So for all of you bulk generators who already have these kind of major project management people, you just need to put it in as a precondition in your uh, terms of engagement that they must do this for you. And try and bring this culture to you. What else do you have? Yeah. 
this is uh, how, if you uh, keep the material separate, you can break and collect the reinforcement separately. Next. And uh, the demolition concrete, which is left after breaking out the reinforcement, is clean and ready for recycling. It can go to a crusher unit, uh, kept unmixed without plastic, gunny sacks, and so on, and uh, can be crushed in a dust-free, low noise way. This is a photo of Rajesh's crush. Uh, it can be crushed into clean, recycled aggregate or into manufactured sand, M sand, which saves the riverbeds. I wonder whether any of you know why sand mining is bad. Uh, some of the reasons I put here, it alters the river flow so that it eats away the river banks which collapse and destroy the uh, fertile fields alongside the river. The river bottom ecology is completely destroyed and also fish life is depleted. The waters become shallow, winding, over warm, and it affects the fishermen's livelihoods. So if you can use M sand instead of river sand, you'll get it at one third the price of river sand. And you can also save the environment at your own pace and somewhere else. Is that the end? Thank you. Thank you.